Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and today I'm going to tell you why you need to buy a Porsche 993 Turbo right now. Remember, if you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button, like and share this video so our channel can grow. Hit that notification bell if you're already a subscriber. I post three videos a week every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern and sometime I sprinkle in a fourth video a week. So you need to hit that notification bell so you don't miss it. And remember to leave a positive comment below. I'm a small YouTube channel and I don't have a social media guy, so it's actually me responding to your comments, so why not leave one? All right, so one of my favorite cars I've ever owned is a Porsche 993 Turbo. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you what's, what's to like about the video, where the market is right now, and why you need to buy one right now. So before we get into all that, let me give you how I wound up at the 993 Turbo, and then we'll go through the progression for the rest of the video. All right, so, I've always loved Porsches. I grew up in American cars, so all my dream cars were always Camaros, Mustangs, and maybe if I made enough money, I could get a used Corvette. So I had a lot of those cars, and uh, when I was going to the track with my Corvette, I noticed coming out of the turns, the 911s had so much traction. They had the engine in the rear pushing down on those rear tires, and even though I would get maybe an ultimately better lap time and be a better driver, I still had a, a tough time keeping up with 911s at the track. A good driver can really use that rear end grip uh, to rocket themselves out of corners. So I tried the first uh, Porsche I ever drove, I think. I don't remember if it was a 996 or 993. I think I actually drove them back to back. And ultimately, uh, due to price, I chose the 996 C4S, which is the first Porsche I ever had. Now coming from a, a Z06 Corvette, this car felt very slow, but once I learned, and there was definitely a learning cur curve coming from front engine cars, when I, once I learned how to use that rear engine grip, uh, the car was to die for. The build quality was uh, incredible, and uh, they could be expensive to maintain. I think the alternator weight on it, obviously, uh, from doing track days too, multiple sets of tires and brakes, but with the all-wheel drive, I put on a set of winter tires, and it was unstoppable in the snow, had great build quality, and I guess a very good, a 996 is a very good, uh, first Porsche. Then because I was doing a lot of autocross at the time, I wanted a mid-engine, either a Boxster or a Cayman. I prefer coupes, so I had a Cayman S, and that was uh, a killer autocross and track car as well. If you're going to do big track days, maybe you got to upgrade the brakes and a couple things there, but overall, a very good car. Porsche is one of the few cars you can literally buy, whether it's new, off the showroom floor, or use, drive a couple hours to the track, race competitively, and drive home without any problems. My Corvettes and American cars broke down countless times and always had overheating problems. There was always an issue with Porsches. You can drive all day and that engine bay is warm but never overheating. So I had at the time a Cayman S. If you see my 2014 video, I think I probably had just sold the Cayman S when I made that video, but I saw my Lotus Exiges. The Lotus had some lot of quality issues and the Cayman S, I felt that I've done all that I could with that. And those two cars together, equaled a 993 Turbo with some change left over. So when I bought my 993 Turbo about six years ago, you know, they were 60 to 70,000. A real low mileage, 10,000 mile car was probably 80,000. A 100,000 mile car was probably 60. So I wasn't sure if I wanted to go up to a 997 Turbo, which would have been logical. 996 C4S, 987 Cayman, which is really uh, based on the 997 Porsches, their 997.1. Do I go to the 997.1 Turbo? I test drove one. I thought it was phenomenal. It was crazy fast at the time, and but it felt kind of an electronic car. So is that exactly what I want? I typically like visceral cars. Then I uh, test drove a 993 Turbo. I had to drive three hours to get there, and once those turbos kicked in, I knew that that was the car for me. So those two cars I sold quite e easily. The Cayman S, the Lotus Exige, I even sold, I believe, for a $10,000 profit, and that gave me more than enough money for the 993 Turbo. Now, 993 Turbos, another reason you need to buy them now, or one of the reasons you need to buy them now, is they were made in limited production numbers. Here in the United States, they were only made for two years, 1996, model year 1996, and model year 1997. They made just about 2,000 of them, about 1,300 in the first year, like mine, in 1996, and about 700 in the second year, 1997. There's, a, except for some colors and some small details, they're essentially an identical car. 997s, they made less of, and they were, it was obviously the last model year, so they sell for a lot, lot, lot more than 996 models do. Now, let's go over. So what did I like so much about the car when I test drove it? 
What I liked about it is there were no electronic nannies. There was no stability control and no traction control. Now that can make it a handful for an inexperienced driver, but I was a pretty experienced driver and uh, you know I knew how to handle that car. And the all-wheel drive does give you a lot of grip. So the all-wheel drive, so turbos previous to the 993 turbo, like the 930s, the 964s, they were single turbos in rear wheel drive. What made the 993 special, at least I thought, is it was a twin turbo and all wheel drive. So now that power can get to the ground. You didn't have to have the wheels 100% pointed straight in order to drive that car like you did in the old turbos, which were called Widowmakers, because in the middle of the turn, if that turbo kicked in, uh, could have catastrophic results. The 993 turbo was more stable, though you could still hurt yourself when that turbo kicks in, because it does kick in uh, like a rocket. And it's it's almost like makes the car going from a regular 993 to scary fast just by that turbo kicking in. Uh, it's a very simple car. You can certainly work on it yourself. I, I put how much that car cost me over the years, and it was minimal, like less than $1,000 doing maintenance yourself. You know, of course, not counting tires and brakes. You'll eat through rear tires and probably about 10,000 miles if you have a heavy foot like me. The brakes are very good. You have the big reds, and they really stop the car. And the, one of the great things about it, another great reason to buy one, is they only come in a six-speed manual. So most cars come in an automatic and a, and a manual or dual clutch and a manual. And you really have to search through the listings. And the dealers always list them as manuals, like, say, Ferrari 360s, for example, Ferrari F430s. And you have to look at the pictures and you see that it's not really a uh, manual. It'll be a paddle shift or something like that. You don't have to worry about the 993s. They all came with a six-speed manual. Now, uh... I think it's the best looking, maybe one of the best looking Porsches ever. And I might be biased, but I just think with the fixed whale tail and the looks of the 993, that'll look phenomenal. And the interior is very simple. Uh, it's, you know, nothing to write home about, but it's very functional. And that's what the car was all about at the time, function. Really, when you drive a modern Porsche, so you drive my 991.2 Carrera, you notice how much the electronics are helping you. When you drive the 993 Turbo, you're the one driving that car. And when that boost kicks in, it's addictive, besides being a gorgeous car. Now, when I bought mine, again, they were in that 60 to 80,000 range. And mine's a driver, not a show car. It had a lot of miles on it. And uh, I put a lot more miles on it. And uh, they went up, like, right after I bought it. So I believe it, I bought it in June of 2014. By September, October, November, they were $150,000 cars. So... Uh, maybe the ratty ones were 120 and the perfect ones were 150, 180, 190. I saw them selling for, and I didn't buy it for an investment. I just bought it because I test drove that and the 997 turbo. And as good as the 997 turbo is, and now we're seeing that go up in value. I just thought the 993 turbo was the more visceral car with its 400 horsepower. Now you'll see a lot of ads that say 408 horsepower in Europe. They just measure it in a different place. So it's the same thing. It's the 3.6 liter, uh, twin turbo flat six. 400 horsepower, about 398 foot-pounds of torque. Motor train, car, and driver, they all got under four seconds on this car. So it's one of the first production cars, not counting a Ferrari F50 or something, that was able to get zero to 60 in under four seconds. So I think Motor Week got like 3.8 seconds. Car and driver, I think, was the fastest. I saw 3.7. And the slowest I've seen was 4.0. So this was a really, really fast car. And remember, it doesn't have stability control. It doesn't have traction control. So you're actually driving it. So... I wasn't ready to sell it in 2014 or 2015 for that matter. I just got the car and I didn't buy it as an investment. I just bought it because it was a great visceral car to drive. So probably missed the market there. Maybe if I had to do it over again, I would have done it. But I'm telling you, I enjoyed putting tens of thousands of miles on this car and I'm glad I didn't sell it. It would be nice to sell it at those prices. But again, mine was a driver. I don't think it was commanding top dollar, but it was just a phenomenal car to drive. So why, do you, why would you buy one right now? Well, I think prices have softened. I think everybody's focus right now, or the last couple of years, is the GT cars. People want the GT3, the GT3 RS, the GT2 RS. You have a lot more choices now because you have, you know, Cayman 718 GT4s. There'll probably be an RS version of that and so on and so on. And I think people are focused on the numbers and the latest and greatest and the hottest thing. And I think people have kind of forgotten the 993 Turbo. It went up so fast, it kind of came crashing down. Now, they're never going to be 60, 70, 80,000 anymore, but they're going to be 100,000. Maybe a 100,000 mile car at 90, maybe a uh, 60,000 mile car at 100. 
maybe a 20,000 mile car, even though they're still asking big money, I don't think they're going to fetch more than 120, 130. So I think now's an excellent time to buy. I think they've actually bottomed out. I think they went up so high with speculators that they've come not crashing down, but back to reality. And I think for that 90, I would get a high mileage one that's maintained because they're not that expensive to maintain. Probably at 100,000 miles, you do need a top end engine rebuild and you have to rebuild you know the turbos along the way and you know a clutch and obviously tires and brakes so you will have some expenses but if you drive it occasionally i think you'll do all right if you can buy i would buy probably one of the cheapest that you can get rather than a low mileage garage queen because i don't think the value is going to be there in the future i think most people are going to be focused on the gt gt cars so i think if you can get one in the 90 100 110 range and drive it couple thousand miles a year you don't want those cars sitting because then they develop leaks and stuff like that but if you can drive that car two to three thousand miles a year get one for about a hundred give or take you won't lose a dime on it the maintenance will be minimal on that car you're not going to have so much maintenance and wear and uh, tear driving at those mileages and i think you'll do very very well and that's why i think you need to buy one right now all right guys remember to like share and subscribe hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next video leave a comment below i'll respond to it what do you think Thanks again for watching, and what would you buy? Would you buy a 993 Turbo or a GT car? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again, and I will talk to you next time.